Hi, morning, everyone. My name is Greg. Um, I'm, uh, as, as, uh, as she said, I'm uh, the tech lead of Code for South Africa. Um, we're a, um, a nonprofit that promotes informed decision making. Uh, we use data and, to and tools and tech to help people make informed decisions that drive social change. We've got four major pillars um, in, in terms of how we approach this. Uh, we work heavily with media. We work with civil society. Um, we're trying to grow our community, and we're just getting our toe into the door and working with government. This is our team. Uh, we're almost coming up on two years old. Uh, we were four at the start of this year. We're now at 10, so we're growing, which is awesome. This is where we work. It's literally under a bridge. Nobody believes this. We try and give us directions, and when people, only when they actually come and visit do they say, oh, you're actually under a bridge. We are under a bridge. We have cars driving over our roof. It's awesome. There's also bubble wrap on the windows to keep it warm in winter. So uh, this is, it's, it gives us a certain edge. This is a shot from a recent um, data quest that we have. So we don't hold hackathons. We feel those are too hacker tech focused. A data quest is where we get a bunch of technologists in the room. We get storytellers, media folks in the room. And we get people who work uh, visually. So uh, you, know, you can put together infographics and that sort of thing. And we, we dig through data. We explore data. We find stories, and, and we try and tell those stories. Um, and this is one that we had, had recently, where we'll be holding another one in a few months. <clears throat> in terms of um, civic impact, this is, this is one of our successful projects we've had over the last year or so. Um, we work heavily with community partners, our CSOs, community um, service organizations. One of those is called Black Sash. They were an anti-apartheid movement. They've been around for 60 years. Since the, the, um, the fall of apartheid, they have uh, re, they, they reinvented themselves as a, um, a, a social justice organization. And we put together some technology for them. The tech's not super interesting, but I'll, I'll get to what it is. The tech helped them monitor social service payouts um, from, from the state, so social welfare. Um, what we allowed them to do was go in, use a mobile solution, and, and poll the people there. What's it like to get a social service payout? Um, how do the people treat you? How much did you get paid? Was that what you expected? Et cetera, et cetera. What we did, we helped them crunch their numbers. Um, and the primary output here was something really low tech. It was posters. It's one of these. That's just got a breakdown of that experience of, of what, it's, what uh, the experience of, of getting a social grant payout is like in each of these centers. What Black Sash did is then they took these posters back to those communities and they sat down with the community as well as with the, the, um, the SASA, the, the, state, the state partner, and they said, this is our experience. We've got some data behind this. We can actually tell a story here. We can make some informed decisions. And we got these people to talk. And suddenly now, the um, SASA payout people, the employees, they can understand what it's like to be on the other side of the counter. And the society, the, the, sort of the citizens, they have a better understanding of what they can expect. So lots of irregularities were found during this in terms of payouts, um, misrepresentations, and things like that. But I think that the key, the key draw card here for us was that we can get these two groups to sit together and to talk and make some informed decisions. Another big impact we had recently in, in the media space, as I said, we work a lot with media, um, was a tool called Living Wage. The idea behind this is that in South Africa, domestic workers are widely used but they're a very big gray area. A lot of people don't know what to pay their domestic worker. So you generally turn to your friends, you turn to your neighbor, say, well, what do you pay? Well, I pay, you know, X hundred rand a day. Okay, I'll pay that. It's not informed at all. So the point behind this was not to say this is what you should be paying. It was simply to say these are the costs that your domestic worker um, <clears throat> incurs. This is probably what you should be paying to try and get over those uh, so that they can meet those costs. So really, it's an argument for uh, something like a minimum wage, but focusing on the domestic worker part, uh, market. We put this out with a media partner. Uh, it had over 50,000 views, which in South Africa, that's very big. Um, it had, we had comments on there. There were over 250 comments, which is the most that that partner has ever seen. Um, there were some horrific comments in there. It's like going through YouTube comments back in the day. Uh, they, they were frightening, racist, and just really scary. Adi, our director, he put on his hazmat suits, and he was very zen. And he went through those comments, and he replied, and made informed, like, you know, gave some good, well-thought-out responses to those comments. 
And it turned out we could distill those, those arguments into um, you know, a couple of categories and actually talk about those. Um, Adi spoke about those on, we had five radio station interviews. Um, so this thing made an impact. There was a big discussion. That is our whole point, was to get discussion around this, to make, to make people realize we shouldn't just say, well, I'm going to pay what my, my next door neighbor or my friend's paying. Let's actually make an informed decision around that. One of our big challenges is data literacy, right? South Africa is one of the most unequal countries in the world. So there's a big gap between the people who really desperately need support and the people who have the skills to provide that support. So that data illiteracy, right down at the, the level of that black sash poster, they don't understand what a percentage means, right? Math skills are poor, numeracy is poor. They don't necessarily understand how to interpret a graph, right? So how do you take information to someone, distill it down to something which they can consume and understand, and make decisions based on that if they don't understand those things? Even if we move up a bit and we're talking about the CSOs, where they do understand numbers and they, they understand percentages and graphs, but they don't know how to go about taking data and making decisions from that data. They don't know how to gather data. They don't know how to clean data, to analyze data. Right? This is one of our biggest obstacles. It's also one of our biggest opportunities. Um, and one of the, the, the big things we've learned is to work with these CSOs. We don't have the capacity, we don't have the skills to drive a product and really reach the people who really need that without working with those CSLs. Those, they know the people on the ground. They can go in and they can interact with them, they speak their language, they can understand the context. We don't. So very rarely will we, will we actually put something out there that doesn't have CSO support. <clears throat> our biggest opportunity, um, I think, is to, and our biggest challenge to meet that ob obstacle is to grow our community to grow the community of people that can provide the support to the people on the ground, as well as to those CSOs out there and other organizations that need technology to do a few things, that need data literacy skills, that need data wrangling skills, that all of those things. We really want to grow that community. That's going to be critical for us. And this is what I want to get from you guys over the next two days, <clears throat> because we don't have the capacity to do this. Looking ahead, um, over the next year, we're growing. We've got uh, small funds, which is really exciting. We're going to be getting more people in. Um, <clears throat> we've just partnered with uh, an open data group in Durban. They've just launched. That is the second open data group in South Africa. So that's just getting off the ground. We're running a data journalism school this year. To uh, We've been trying to work with some of the more senior data uh, or journalists to teach them data journalism. And uh, it's kind of hard to teach old dogs new tricks. So we figured you've got to get them young. So we're going to get in young journalists and teach them skills. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, there's a lot going on this year. As I said, we're also starting to get our toes into government. Uh, we've got some, some um, MOUs to start putting fellows in, in, in one of the cities. We're working on another one. Uh, during the year, we managed to get Africa's, apparently Africa's first city open data portal and open data policy. We're trying to drive more of those in South Africa. We're trying to get some engagement from those municipalities. So we're trying to get our, our toes into that door. And the, the critical thing we need to grow is, is our community. So I'm very keen to hear how you guys are growing your community. Sounds like that's a common theme. Um, to take the burden off, off of us and to really um, open things up. Because especially in South Africa, I think there's such low hanging fruit. We don't need to build really complicated applications. Sometimes it boils down to teaching people how to use Excel basic, simple skills, crunching some numbers, answering questions, and finding the story in data. And with that, we can really empower people to make informed decisions. Thanks. Thank you, Greg.